everybody welcome back to my channel and another tutorial today i'm happy to sew along with you the morphing convertible bag by chris w designs i tell you this was such a fun make and it's such a like when they say it's a convertible bag it truly is a convertible bag first off let's talk about what you needed to make this. So it can be made in cottons, it can be made in vinyls, it can be made in leathers, whatever it is that your machine can handle, you can make this in. This one is done as a birth bag and I show you how to do that throughout this. If you are one that prefers binding, you can definitely change this into a bound bag as well. It would be super easy. Um, let's see, fabrics I use in this bag, this, I don't know. I've used this uh, fabric in a few bags now. This was in my scrap bin. I know I got it from Fabricland. My vinyl is uh, the Canuck vinyl from Galaxy Customs. Same with the yellow. I don't remember what the I don't remember what the colors are. My zippers and zipper pulls are from Blue Cala. It's probably not going to focus. Look at these little bumblebees. I had to use a scrap of the bee fabric because I needed to use these pulls. Um, my wedding. I want to say I got this webbing from Pack Hannah, but I don't know for sure. <laughs> Again, it was just kind of something that was scrap. All my hardware is from Emmeline Bags. Um, my uh, interfacing, all my woven interfacing is EB Fuse Light, which is similar to a medium woven interfacing like SF101, Woven Fuse, Easy Fuse, etc., etc. I get the EB Fuse Light from Emmeline Bags. My main stabilizer is the Sew. So Pretty in Pink Sew Foam from Galaxy Customs. Um, I have a piece of Decaville Heavy in the bottom of this, which I got from Emmeline Bags. What else, what else, what else? I think that's it material-wise. Um, one thing I did do differently in this bag, and it was because I didn't follow the pattern instructions. Oh, brandy, brandy, brandy. I went rogue like I usually do on a pattern. So for the um, foam pieces, <laughs> My exterior pieces, you were supposed, to, I was supposed to put the foam on each piece separately. Um, I made my front and my back panels um, first and then I attached them to foam. That is not the way to do it. <laughs> it worked out perfectly fine. You can do it that way if you like. I ended up not having any problems with that. But yeah, when I got to that part, I'm like, oh, Brandy. But yes, yeah, so the exterior panels have foam attached before you sew the pieces together, but you'll see in this video, I do it once I have my front and back panels done and it worked out okay. Um, oh, I also used fleece in this, um, just a Pellon fusible fleece for parts of it for this front pocket here. Um, I got that from Emmeline Bags. What else? Um, hmm. It comes in two sizes. This one here is the small. Let me show you some of the amazing features of this bag. So oh, this, it, this bag is just so amazing because it can be a handbag. It can be a backpack. I'll show you it's while you weave clips in like this and put it on your back. Can you see that like that? It can be a shoulder or a crossbody bag simply by pulling this up and adjusting the slider. Then you can wear it as a crossbody. Don't know if you can see that. It's a crossbody if you want it, or as a shoulder bag. One thing I did a little bit differently in this pattern um, when I made it is I made the straps detachable so if you wanted to wear it as a just carry it as a handbag you could or I know sling bags are really a thing right now so I made it so when you have your crossbody strap off let me adjust my camera again excuse the mess you can tighten this up and on the back of the bag you can see how there are four d-rings so depending which way you want your sling to go you put these on diagonally see if i could do this on camera so it's completely adjustable so it's great for all body sizes you can definitely adjust the length of the strap or here we go 
No, nope, that would be if I want to wear it as a sling in the front, which is kind of like a crossbody. Now to put it into my back, how do I do this? There we go. Let me just adjust the camera here. You can see it works as a sling going across the back as well. So yeah, this is just such an amazing bag. Other features of the bag. Under here is a hidden zipper pocket. And on the inside, I have to show off these bumblebee pulls. When you open it up, you have a zipper pocket. And it's, it's actually the small one will hold a fair amount. And on the back, there is a cell phone pocket that goes quite deep. So this is like the perfect little bag when you're out traveling, when you're out shopping, um, and you don't want to be carrying something really big and you want to be hands-free. This is definitely the way to go. So anyways, thank you so much for Christine for allowing me to make this tutorial. I so appreciate it and I'm just so happy to share this. So how about we get to making this bag? Supplies, you're going to need some rivets, number five zipper tape, some webbing, two sliders, four D-rings, four zipper pulls, your nameplate. You're gonna need your stabilizer pieces for your back connectors, that's Decaville Heavy. Your two top gusset pieces, your one of your front panel piece, your back top panel piece, your base stabilizer, your two connector pieces, your back bottom piece, your gusset piece, your lower gusset piece, your front pocket exterior, and two lining pieces. I have fleece on my exterior piece, your cell phone pocket, both with fleece. Your lining back and front pieces. Your lining gusset piece. Your uh, phone pocket or your zipper pocket pieces, lining pieces. Your top lining gusset pieces. And you will need some foam. Okay, so we are going to start with our pocket piece. So I went ahead and I installed my nameplate already on the front pocket piece. And we're going to take some double-sided tape and put it along the um, straight side of our front pocket piece. You can use clips as well. Also do this on one of the lining pieces. Now what we want to do is make sure our zipper pull is orientated going closing upwards going to take this, put it right sides together with the exterior pocket piece, either clip or stick it down with tape. Then take your lining piece and we are going to put this right sides together with that piece so it'll be stuck to the wrong side of the zipper tape and facing right sides together with the exterior piece. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to sew across here with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so I really recommend when working with zippers to put on your right zipper foot, which I have done here. It just makes it so you can have a nice straight zipper and you can get your seam allowance really good because you can get close to that zipper tape. Okay, once that is done, what we want to do is we want to put, um, kind of wing these out like this, but have your um, seam going towards the exterior piece. Give it a good press and then we are going to top stitch that seam in place through the exterior piece with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Again, making sure you're not catching that lining piece, have it kind of folded out the opposite direction. Now that that's done, I'm going to take my ruler because this is a hidden pocket and I am going to measure in, I believe it was five eighths of an inch. Please do double check your measurements with the pattern. Also because if you're doing the small or the large as well, the measurements will be different. So I'm just taking my chalk line and I am drawing that line. And this is going to be a guide for where we are going to fold this back towards the lining. 
Okay, so now we're going to fold that exterior piece right along that line, bringing it right sides together with the lining piece. Double check that your measurement is correct. Give that a good press. And then we're going to go ahead and we are going to top stitch through that folded line. Now you're going to see the lining looks longer. That is okay. We will take care of that momentarily. Okay, so that's done. So we're going to go ahead and we are going to trim up that lining piece to match the exterior piece. There we go. And I'm just going to go ahead and right along the straight line, I just want to baste it to hold it in place just along that straight line. So that is done here. Now what we want to do is install the lining, the other lining piece on the opposite side of the zipper, so the unsewn side. So once again, I am going to go ahead and use some double-sided tape or clips. I'm going to do the same with this other pocket panel piece, the little one, right along that straight edge. Then we're going to take that zipper that's not attached to anything right side up and put it right side up on our lining piece. Kind of have to fold the hidden zipper seam out of the way. And then take that other pocket piece, the exterior pocket piece there, and we are going to put it right sides together with the exterior piece like so. So it'll be right sides together with our zipper tape as well. Kind of sandwiching that zipper tape in between. And then we're going to go ahead and sew this in place with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So that is done. So now what we want to do, so we want to make sure that that lining piece is going to the right, so towards the lining um, pocket piece. And our exterior piece, we want the seam to be folding up towards that exterior yellow piece here, and then we're going to top stitch that seam in place. So again, make sure that the lining is not being caught in this seam. So that is done. As you can see, it hides that zipper nicely. And you can see our lining piece is a little bit long here, so we're going to go ahead and trim them to the same size. There we go. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to baste that all together. Okay, so that gives us our completed front panel here with a working pocket. Go ahead and set that aside for now. Okay, so now we're going to work on our back panel with the phone pocket. This is such an amazing technique. I just love how this comes together. So our bottom piece, our exterior piece, we want to find our top and bottom centers while we're here. So I'm just going to, you can do a little mark or you can do snips like me. Make sure it is definitely center. Take one of your cell phone lining pocket pieces that is backed with the fleece. So both of them are black, backed with fleece. Find the top center of that. Match that top center up like so and clip across. And now what we're going to do is we are going to so across here, I'm going to change into my standard uh, foot now. I don't need my zipper foot for a little bit. We're going to go ahead and sew that in place with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so that is done. So you want to kind of press this up and out of the way. If you can use an iron, go in ahead. I am using vinyl, so I can't use iron. So I'm just going to use some double-sided tape as my pressing agent to press this lining pocket up and over the exterior piece like so. 
Okay, so now we are going to take our exterior back piece, find our top and bottom centers again. Okay, we're going to do some marking here. Again, refer to your pattern piece. So we do not want to sew all the way across here. So you're going to measure in as per what your pattern piece and your size says and make marks like this. And then we're going to take this and we're going to put it right sides together right along here and clip in place. Okay, now we're not going to sew all the way across. Well, we kind of are. We're going to where we did those marks, sew with a regular stitch length. And then if you're not using vinyl, this is a mistake that I make because I am using vinyl, is you're going to do a regular stitch length to that first mark and back stitch. And then you're going to go ahead and lengthen to a basting stitch and go all the way across to the next mark. Lower your stitch length again, do a back stitch and go across. Now what this has done to my vinyl is it has left little um, holes in it because we will be pulling those basting stitches out later. What I should have done is like I'm going to show you now is for this steam, um, instead of doing those basting stitches, I should have just taped it down like this. Um, we are actually now going to press these seams open. So if you can take it to your iron, go ahead. Again, I can't because I'm using vinyl. So open up those seams on both sides. And when you do this back side, what it's going to do is it's going to pull that one pocket lining piece down towards the bottom piece, which is what we want, like so. Okay, so now what we want to do is just top stitch along the bottom of that seam. I know it seems like we have a closed in pocket, but just work with me. You'll see how this works shortly. Okay, so that top stitching is done. Now we're going to take our other piece like so. Find, or we're going to put some double sided tape along the top. And we are going to put this right sides together with the other phone pocket piece. But we are going to line the top of this piece up with that uh, top seam that we have fanned out right there. Mark it right along the top. Stick it in place. Use a few clips or pins to hold those together. And now what we're going to do is along that top seam, we are going to go ahead and we are going to top stitch along there and that is going to hold that second lining place piece in place. Now at this point we want to reopen up Actually, no, we want to make our cell phone pocket, close it up. Now I did cut mine too short. Um, I didn't take into account the seam allowance I would need at the bottom for my cell phone. So I did end up sewing some more fabric onto the bottom and redoing that, which you will see later. But once you have it in place, you're gonna go ahead and you're going to sew those three sides shut. So um, what you're gonna do is kind of fold the exterior pieces up and out of the way and you're going to just go as close as you can to that exterior seam without sewing through it and go down that one side. And you're gonna see right here where I added on um, a little extra length because I cut too much off. Again, it's all good, it's fixable. Across the bottom and then again up the other side getting as close as you can to that exterior seam without sewing through the exterior. And then next we are going to open up that cell phone pocket. Um, see, mine fits now. So um, this is where you will remove those long basting stitches um, or pull away the double sided tape, depending what you did here. You may not even need to pull away the double sided tape. So take your time here and pull those, just the basting stitches out. I actually went and I steamed out those holes. Luckily, this marine vinyl is really good when you have holes in it. A little steam will take those holes away. Thank goodness. Pull out those threads and there you go. Cell phone fits good. 
Okay, so next what we are going to do is we are going to center our bottom uh, stabilizer onto our bottom exterior gusset piece. So the way I like to do this is to snip the centers, make sure you are center. Do the same with your heavy stabilizer piece. While I'm here, I'm also going to do the centers of my straight sides or my short sides. Sometimes it helps to draw your center lines like this to get a very, very centered piece of Decaval Heavy on here or Peltex. So I've done the lines on this and what you do is you just line up those lines, go ahead and fuse this in place. It's all done here. So now you're gonna take all your exterior pieces and you are going to put them to foam if you skip that step in the beginning like I did. Okay, so I also went ahead and put my uh, rivets in for extra security. I had to cut a hole in my foam so my pocket would have a little bit more give. Next, we're gonna work on our bottom back stabilizer pieces. So along the bottom straight edge, you're gonna measure up 3 eighths of an inch on both, as well as find your top and bottom centers, and draw a line down there as well. This is gonna be for the placement of our stabilizer pieces. So we're gonna take one and I'm gonna go ahead and kind of match it in between those lines and fuse those in place, and they will be mirrored to one another. Then we want to fold this bottom straight edge. You can press this if you're using cotton. Up along that line, using the stabilizer kind of as your guide. Once that's done, you can put these pieces aside for now. Next, we're gonna work on our um, webbing connector pieces here. So these for these small, I believe these were three inches long. I'm gonna take some double-sided tape and put it along the bottom edges. You can also base these on the sewing machine if you don't wanna use the double-sided tape. You will not be sewing through this tape. Okay, and then you're gonna take your D-rings, put them through, bring these wrong sides together and use the tape to hold them for all four. Okay, so now we've got our connector pieces back here. So on our um, connectors here, we want to measure down about three eighths of an inch or so. And we're going to use that as a guide where we are going to place these on these connectors. So on that folded up edge, you want to kind of sandwich it right in there. Fold these in half wrong sides together. Clip together the raw edges. And you're lining that folded edge up with that 3 8 of an inch line underneath the hardware that we drew. You'll do that for both and they will be mirrored to one another. Then we're going to go ahead and we are going to top stitch the two folded edges and baste the, the curved raw edge. You will do this for both. Now to place these, I also went through and I put rivets through those to add a little extra security and stability for those connectors. From the bottom side, I'm measuring up an eighth inch. It is a different measurement for the larger ones, so make sure you double check your measurements there. And you're gonna line that curved edge up, starting at that one eighth of an inch line that we drew up as a guide, and clip that in place. Do the same with the other side. and then we'll base that in place. So that is all done. Now we're gonna work with our two top connectors. So I'm gonna take these to the machine and I'm going to stitch across as close as I possibly can to my D-rings. So I've put my zipper foot on again because I can put that middle part of my walking foot right up against my hardware so it gets nice and tight with it for both.
we're going to do some marking so we know where we're going to be putting these. So I just took the pattern piece for the exterior back top and I cut little slits in and I'm going to use those to draw my lines where these uh, tabs are going to go. So I have my tab pieces folded down. I'm going to take my marking pen and just mark where that is. I'm also going to, while I'm here, do the same for where my handle placement is. Now the handle is optional. You do not have to install the handle, but I'm going to for this video. And I'm just going to write tab in the two end ones so I don't get confused. Now I'm going to take my connector tabs here. I'm going to measure up a half inch or so from the bottom raw edges. And I'm going to have my D rings going right at those marks facing down towards the exterior and lining that raw edge up with that mark we just made. And then we're going to go ahead and base these in place. Now that that's done, we're going to mark our handle placement on our exterior front as well. If you're doing the handle, I'm using chalk for this because I, uh, that's a fabric piece there. Then you're going to take your handle pieces. And on the bottom of each of the short edges, we're going to measure up that half inch, just like we did with the connectors on both sides. Again, double check the measurements with the pattern. And to install these, we're going to, just like we did with the connectors, line them up with those marks. When you bring this around, make sure it is not twisted and match it up the other side. And then you'll go ahead and you will baste these in place and do the same for the back piece. Okay, so that is all done, and we can set these aside for now. Okay, so now we're going to work on our upper gusset pieces. So you're going to see the lining pieces kind of go outwards. We're working with the long edge here. So just like for our front pocket, we're going to use either clips or double-sided tape. Along that long side, I have my lining piece right side up with the tape there. I'm going to take my exterior piece and put some along one of the uh, or long edges there. Then I'm going to take my zipper right side up and my lining piece right side up and align one of the long edges. Now you will see the zipper tape is longer. That is okay. We will trim that up later. And then you're going to take your exterior piece and put it right sides together like so, making sure they line up with that lining piece. You'll want your zipper fit on your machine again and then we're going to sew across this with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Depending on your machine, you may want to cut back your foam here, pull out those basting stitches and trim out that foam. I'm not going to worry about it. My machine is an industrial. I can ha it can handle that. So I'm just going to leave as is. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use some tape as my basting here. Again, if you're using a material you can press, take this to the iron and press it. I'm going to pr um, finger press this nice and tight away from the zipper teeth, like so. And I'm going to do the same with the lining side. And you are going to see the lining is going to look like it's shorter than the uh, exterior. And that is okay. That is what we want because our lining is going to be slightly smaller than what our exterior pieces are. So we don't have a saggy lining. So pull this nice and tight away from the zipper teeth. I'm just going to use a few hair clips here just to kind of hold it nice and tight away. And flat because I don't want that lining piece kind of getting caught in the top stitching we are about to do. Once we have this all in place we are going to take this to the machine and we are going to top stitch along that seam we had just sewn with an eighth of an inch seam allowance.
That is all done. You're going to repeat the exact same process with the opposite side of the zipper. Okay, so that's our top gusset done. Now what we want to do is we want to fold, well actually first find your top and bottom centers of both the lining and exterior pieces. So just fold it in half and clip or mark that center. Do the same with the lining. This will help when we go to put on those, um, the main panels later on. Okay, so now what we wanna do is we wanna fold those lining pieces kind of up and out of the way and hold them with clips. On the ends, you wanna fold them in. We wanna make sure we are not gonna be catching this in our stitching. Okay, now what we're going to do is take our exterior bottom gusset piece and match it up with right sides together with that zipper panel. If your gusset piece is a little bit too long, that's okay. Just we can go ahead and we can trim that up so they match up like so. And then what we're going to do is from the end, we are going to sew almost to where that seam is. And then same with the on the other side. We do not want to be sewing through the lining or the zipper teeth at this time. So you're going to start here, 3 eighths of an inch, back stitch, get as close as you can to that seam, and back stitch, cut your thread, and then jump over to the other side, put your needle down as close as you can to that seam, and stitch across. You can see here it leaves an opening just where the zipper tape is and that is exactly what we want. You're going to do the exact same thing with the other side. So that's both sides done. You can go ahead and take the clips holding the lining piece out of the way and we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. So I'm finding my uh, center bottoms of my lining gusset piece. That'll help for later. Okay. So we are going to, this feels a little awkward, you're going to kind of pull the exterior out of the way when you're sewing this. Put those lining pieces right sides together and clip on both sides of the zipper. Again, we're doing exactly like we did with the exterior piece. It's just a little more cumbersome now. So what we're going to do is hold the exterior out of the way like this and you're going to sew just like we did with the exterior not quite to the seam with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance on both sides. So yeah, the easiest way is pull the lining up like this and the exterior kind of hold back with your hand like so. So that's been done on both sides and this is what we look like. So you kind of want to flip this around like so. Bringing our lining piece kind of up and out like this, having our bottom gussets together. Um, we formed a big loop and what we want to do is on the lining side here, we want to sew across just where the tape, the zipper tape is with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And what that's gonna do is it's also going to do a little bit of a top stitch on the exterior, just across where the zipper tape is. It's very important that we only sew the middle sections here. We do not sew into the outer parts because we need the raw edges of our lining and our exteriors to be free of each other for when we go to put on our main panels. So make sure that your seam is facing towards the bottom gusset piece. So once again, you're just starting pretty much where the zipper tape started. It's about an inch or so. Put your needle down, 
and then sew across to the other edge of where the zipper tape would have been, or it is. Okay, so you can see it's only that little bit done there. Now we're going to flip this over, pull the lining out of the way. So now we're only working with the exterior piece. And we are going to finish that top stitching without catching the lining. So you're going to start on one side, go across, cut your thread. So you're kind of meeting where those lines were, but you're not sewing through the lining pieces here. So I'm to where that, um, where the zipper tape was back stitching, breaking my thread, hopping over and continuing the line over. You will do this with both seams. There we go, we're all done. You can see our lining is still free of our exterior, but we have that nice top stitch line of our gusset. Okay. <laughs> Now what we want to do is just make sure our centers are definitely still centered that we snip so that's matching up those seams and double checking that our centers match and mine do. Now you're going to flip the linings kind of in a loop together and the exteriors in a loop together. Now we're going to take our front exterior piece, we're going to find our top and bottom centers. You're also going to find the centers on the side. And I really hope I can show this well. So we're going to be working with the exterior now. Make sure the zipper is open. The lining is up and out of the opposite direction, kind of folded out of the way. We do not want it to get caught in our stitching here. Line up our uh, top center parts of the gusset as well as our exterior front piece. Put in a couple clips, again making sure the lining is free and out of the way. Do the same with the bottom centers. We're also going to clip our side centers. Now the gusset side centers is the seam where we attach the uh, top gusset to the bottom gusset. So you'll use those as your center mark and the clips on the side. Again, making sure your lining is pulled out of the way. We do not want to sew through that. I'm just uh, evening up my gusset a little bit there. Then you're going to evenly distribute the fabric in between those four clipped points. Now when you get to the curvy parts, you may notice that it looks like it doesn't want to go around. That's because our gusset is straight and our main panels are curvy. So you're just going to put some 1 8 of an inch snips in like so, and that'll help fan that fabric out and around that curve like so. So you'll do that for all four corners. Once that's all clipped into place, you're going to go ahead and you're going to sew around here with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance.
so that is all done. I'm just feeling in to make sure everything was good. If you need to do another line of stitching, feel free of doing that. Um, go ahead and notch your corners. Now, I'm going to make sure the lining is out of the way again, and we are going to attach the other side of the exterior in the exact same manner. Okay, so the exterior is done. Now we're going to work on our lining pockets. Now I've already done my lining pocket. If you need a class for that, it's down below in the description. Okay, so this is a little more confusing. You're going to take that front pocket panel exterior piece and kind of squish it inside like this so we can expose the raw edges of our lining pieces. So there's a lot of squishing happening here. Okay, you're going to take your top center of the one gusset piece and we are going to match these exactly like we did with the exterior, but you're squishing the exterior inside. Make sure your gusset isn't twisted at this point and you're working with all the same size side of the gusset all the way around. Clip those four points together, uh, do your curves around, and you are going to sew this exactly the same with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance once you're all done all the way around. sewing the lining the hardest part as you can see I'm not perfect by any means but it's the lining nobody's going to know so I'm just going to trim that excess around those corners off and then what we want to do so it doesn't droop inside the bag at the very top we're going to take that seam of our lining and the seam of the exterior that we had sewn and we are going to clip those together just along that top and this is to make it so the gusset lining doesn't fall into the bag. And then what we're going to do is within the seam allowance, so about a quarter of an inch in or so, we're gonna go and just sew along that top with a quarter of an inch seam allowance to hold that seam in place. That looks like when it's all done now we're going to want to do the same thing with the other side so you kind of got to do a little bit of flipping here to bring that lining side that we had just sewn outwards so we want that to be facing up towards you like so and then you're going to be pushing pushing this in to the back side or the front side now to bring up the 
unsewn side of the lining gusset. So lots of squishing. The only difference we're going to do this time is we are going to leave the bottom open for turning. So I like to mark that so I don't forget. And then when we sew this other uh, lining panel on, we're going to start and stop at those marks, leaving that bottom open. So as you can see, it is open. Once that's all done, and then you're going to turn this right side through. Once you get it turned out, take your time to massage out all of the seams, like so, especially if you're using vinyl. You can always take this to the iron if you're using cottons to press these seams nice and tight. Make sure it closes good, and it does. And now what we have left to do is to close up the bottom of the bag. So that hole that we left in the bottom of our zipper pocket, you're gonna go ahead, reach in, grab the opening in the lining like so, pull it through that zipper pocket, and then match up those raw edges. I like to go and find my center mark that I had marked on the bottom of that, those lining pieces and match them up. We're also gonna be looking to where our stitching had stopped when we had sewn that onto the gusset, and that's where we're going to start clipping. Again, find that center, match up that center and clip all the way across that opening. And then you're going to stitch it from where our starting our stitches started and stopped when we originally left that hole in the lining to seal up the bottom of the bag. Okay, so I've gone ahead and done that. Then you can go ahead, stuff that back in, double check there's no holes, I look good. And now you just have to top stitch, making sure your raw edges are turned under for your zipper pocket and top stitch that with a quarter of an inch or so shut. Then stuff that in. Double check there's no holes, it looks great. Okay, then next what we want to do is do our crossbody strap. You can go ahead. I have a class for how to make that down below in the description if you need it. You can see how it morphs perfectly. Admire your work. And then we're done. All right, that's it, that's all. What did you guys think of that? It's actually a pretty quick sew. It's a pretty easy sew. Um, the hardest part for me, because I am somebody that does prefer binding, was doing this as a birth bag. Uh, what we did in here, I actually used to do the construction of, I used to change bound bags when I was scared of binding to this kind of construction. Um, so this is the first time in a few years that I um, have done a construction like this. So it was really good to uh, revisit those skills because it's definitely great and binding isn't for everybody. So this is a definite way uh, to do that. It also shows you how if you find a, bind a binding pattern, how you can modify it to make it into this. Um, if I were to make this again, because I am a binding person, I, I am going to actually try binding with the next one. So it's just so great that this bag can be done in both methods. But of course, in this method and in the pattern, it is birthed. Um, anyways, if you like this video, please do give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. If you'd like to support my channel further, you can always buy me a coffee. That's linked down below in the description. And until the next one, I'll see you guys later. Bye.